Well, we're sitting here today with John Grisham, who is the author most recently of The Appeal, but who's also written some of the, the biggest books of our generation. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to Borders today. My pleasure. Welcome to Charlottesville. Oh, it's, it's nice to be here. You know, I thought we'd start talking about the new book. It's a return to legal thrillers for mm -hmm. you. Your last one, I believe, was 2005 with The Broker. Mm -hmm. It's one of those themes that I know your, your fans are going to be absolutely thrilled to, to have you come back to. So you set it up similar to some of your other, other books. Sure. As you progress, though, into the book, uh, it, the, the story gets a lot more complicated. You talked about some of the political intrigue, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of those themes as far as the, the politics and the judgeships. Well, the book is all fiction, uh, but there's a lot of truth in it. And what's happened in this country in the past really 10 years, there's been a uh, well-financed, well-coordinated um, effort on the part of big business uh, and the Chamber of Commerce to purchase seats on Supreme Courts. 30 some odd states elect their judges. And almost all those states have no restrictions as to private money. So you've got uh, some very powerful special interest groups uh, raising lots of money to buy judgeships. And the races have become terribly expensive, uh, even in small states. And the campaigns are incredibly nasty and vicious, and, and it's, a, it's kind of a rotten system. We're, we're, there's a lot of money, obviously, involved in these races. There's a lot of money at stake. And what, what I did with, with the appeal was take one case and show how much money can be at stake in one case and have one bad guy, uh, one corporate guy who's, um, you know, pretty evil and show how he can manipulate the system. And again, it's all fiction, but it's also very realistic. You know, your, your career as a, as a lawyer obviously plays into all of your legal books and in fact, all of your books. Uh, but in this case, uh, you know, you, you, you're far removed from your career. Do you still harken back to your career as a lawyer when you're writing these books now, or is this becoming just part of who you are and part of your writing style now? Well, being a lawyer was crucial to being a writer for me. I mean, even, even now, uh, when I read a book that's a, a legal thriller or about the law, I can tell if it's written by a lawyer or not. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. And so when I write the books, especially the legal thrillers or the courtroom dramas or whatever, um, I know the stuff. I mean, I know, I know the basics. I, I do a fair amount of research. Uh, but I don't think I would have ever written the first book had I not been a lawyer. So they, they all go back to that eventually. That first book, uh, Time to Kill, which was way back in 1989, do you, do you look at that and, and can you still look at your old books and, and sort of understand where you were at that time or is it hard for you to look at that? It's odd. Uh, over the years, people ask me, um, they'll say, you know, I, I enjoyed your first books, but I really, you know, I don't get your later books. So I, I ask myself, well, have I changed? Have I changed? Has my style changed? And so I'll go back uh, occasionally and read A Time to Kill or, or The Firm, two books that were written without knowing if they were ever going to get published. I can't see any difference. I can't, no, I cannot, although it's hard for me to read my own stuff. And I, you know, I've written, uh, this is, The Appeal is book number 21 in 20 years, 19 years. Obviously, I'm writing them pretty fast. Uh, by the time I finish one, I tend to put it down and go to the next one. I don't, uh, and I've always found it difficult to go back and pick up a book and just open it up and, because you'll read a, you'll read a sentence, I'll read a sentence and, I'll say that's that sounds pretty good, you know, and, and I'll read it the next <laughs> one and say, uh, yeah, the, the next one I'll read and go, ouch, you know, well, I was in a hurry when I wrote that. I should have I should have taken more time. Do you so. remember writing those books? I mean, you remember the uh, you know the sentence formulation, all that, or is no? It just... I can I can pretty well remember where I was in life, where I was physically, what was happening that year with each book. Uh, but again, after 21 books, it's, I have a hard time remembering the characters. I am continually embarrassed when people approach me and, and ask, uh, well, in the partner, why did the lawyer do this, this, and this? Or why did this character? And I have trouble remembering what the names are. You yeah. know, like it's, it's a, it's a, there have been a lot well, of words since then. It's one of the challenges of being uh, as prolific as you are. I don't worry about it too much. I just, I'm, I'm doing the next book. Right. I'm doing the next book. Well, I know you're on to the next book, but I want to talk about Time to Kill one more time because that book came out of your, you, you were writing it basically, um, you know, behind the scenes, you were working as a lawyer. It was a, it was a private hobby um, and, and maybe a hope for a career. But uh, 
This book was published actually by a publisher named Winwood Press, I believe, and they didn't make it long enough to succeed with you. I mean, do you keep in touch with any of the, the folks from that publishing house back then? No, they went under real fast. It was a brand new publishing company in 1989. I think uh, Time to Kill was the first or second novel they published. They had a short list that year and a short list the next year. And I think after a couple of years, they went broke or closed or whatever. A Time to Kill, they printed 5,000 hardback copies. It never went to paperback. It didn't sell the hardback. And it sort of languished around for a year or so. Uh, there were a few copies in bookstores around Memphis, but nowhere else. And then uh, when The Firm came out in March of uh, 91, suddenly there was some interest in the earlier book. Uh, and it, they disappeared pretty fast from the bookstores. Oh, well, they sure did. No, uh, Winwood was, uh, you know, they gave me a break. They published my first book, but it didn't sell. And uh, they, they didn't stay in business long enough to, to publish the next one. Yeah, well, they found you. And there's a lot of people who are certainly glad about that. <laughs> I do remember when Time to Kill was re-released uh, and, and everybody was so hungry for another one and the fact that there was another one that could come right on the heels right. of it was a, was a good thing.